Colombia is going to be sending military aircraft, rescue workers, food and medical supplies where the earthquake uh, killed uh, thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of people. And they have people on the ground there in Haiti already. Joining us from Tokyo is the Honorable Jaime Bermudez, the foreign minister for Colombia, who happens to be visiting Japan at the moment and took time out of a very, very busy schedule indeed to join us on the show. Minister, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, Colombia st certainly stepped up to the plate very rapidly. From your perspective, what can you tell us about uh, the, the efforts going on in Haiti? The, perhaps uh, you've been in contact with some of the uh, Colombian nationals who are assisting with the relief efforts. Uh, what is the best guess as to how efficient uh, the rescue supplies and uh, efforts are being deployed? Well, thank you. First of all, I would like to reiterate our solidarity with the people of Haiti. And actually, Colombia has established a special committee to attend and to be uh, very effective in terms of assistance to this country and its people and its government. And actually, our Minister of Interior Affairs is personally in charge of this, and he is landing today in Haiti with the help and aid we are sending to this country. Our President, President Uribe, is going to be personally in Haiti this Sunday, if everything goes smoothly. And we are very much committed to help Haiti. And actually, we are sending, as you said, medicine, people, trained dogs, special personnel. And for some months ago, we've having some police personnel in Haiti helping with different tasks they are actually taking care of in Haiti. And they are now very much committed to help Haiti, too. So we are all together very much uh, working hand in hand with this country and with the aid they might need urgently. Now, Mr. Minister, uh, is each country in, uh, in, in that part of the world, is each country in South America uh, dealing on a one-to-one peer-to-peer -one, uh, basis with the Haitian government, or is there some sort of coordination among Lat uh, Latin American uh, nations to make sure there isn't duplicity, that you're not uh, you know, sending the same sorts of things? Or, or, or is there any, any level of coordination which has gone on? I realize it's only been 48 hours. Well, to be honest, I don't know whether there's a regional uh, plan to work hand in hand with Haiti all together. What I can say now is that Colombia, as I suppose many others, are working uh, to help Haiti as fast as we can. But I think you are right. We should also come up with a plan, regionally speaking. And I presume the OAS, the Organization of American States and the United Nations, are also working in that regard. But we should take care of not duplicating all the efforts. You are right. Okay. Mr. Minister, thank you very much on behalf of the world and the Haitians, of course, for the aid which Colombia is providing to that uh, tragedy-stricken tragedy stricken nation. I'd like to move to a different subject with you, Mr. Minister, and that is the question of ongoing conflict in your part of the world, uh, particularly uh, Hugo Chavez, the leader of Venezuela, has stepped in and uh, been a bit of a, uh, a thorn in the side uh, of uh, the latest round of recriminations. And I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of wondering if you could clarify. Uh, have you been talking to your peers in Venezuela? What is that situation? As of late, there were allegations uh, from, uh, from uh, Mr. Chavez that uh, military incursions cross-border were leading to a, a potentially very explosive conflict situation. Can you give, give, us, give us your latest interpretation there? Well, yes. Um, I would like to be, to be very clear. First of all, the main and only enemies that Colombia has are drugs narco-trafficking and terrorist activities. Colombia is a country that has suffered a lot for ages because of drugs and terrorist activities. Unfortunately enough, we have been very effective. And now Colombia has become a very much safer place in which you can invest, do business, and do tourism. So that's the reason why we are trying to work hand in hand with many other countries in the world to be more effective in terms of counteracting drugs and terrorist activities today. But apart from that, we would like to have the better relationship we can actually have with our neighboring countries, starting with mm -hmm. Venezuela, Ecuador, and many others. And we truly want to have a very respectful relationship with anyone in the region. That's our goal. Mm -hmm. Mr. Minister, however, you know, uh, Mr. Obama's plans for a, a, a military base and the whole rollout process has rankled uh, uh, presumably some of your neighbors in Latin America. With the benefit of, of hindsight, could that have been handled better? Has that in any way isolated Colombia further from your neighbors? Well, not at all. Actually, I would say that we are not having U.S. bases in Colombia as we haven't had in the past. We're just 
improving our cooperation agreement with the United States, as we would like to have the same with many other countries, and as we do have with many other countries in the world. And as I said, our main goal is counteract drugs and terrorist activities. And we need to be more effective, not only for Colombian sake, but also for the region and the entire world. And apart from that, we would like to have the best relationship we can actually have with all our neighboring countries and the region. And we have a very good relationship with many others, as Brazil, Chile, mm -hmm. Mexico, Ecuador today, and so on. Minister, do you feel like you're being treated perhaps a little bit unfairly by the White House, by the Obama administration? I mean, okay, but we're not talking a bona fide military base, but we are talking about uh, you know escalation of troop hosting uh, in that in, in, in your within your domain. At the same time, a free trade agreement that was uh, negotiated, uh, you know, a lot of the nuts, bolts, and pieces were put in place uh, were negotiated pre-Obama administration, and now on ice because it has not been popular. With with the Democratic majority among lawmakers. Do you feel like you're being asked to do something, but there isn't enough quid pro quo there? Well, let me be very clear about the cooperation we get from the United States. This has been the case for ages. Actually, Plan Colombia started with President Clinton and continued with President Bush, and it's going to go ahead with President Obama. And uh, we are not having more people from the U.S. in Colombia. Actually, the best ones to fight in Colombia are our own soldiers and police. We are just asking for technical cooperation in terms of counterterrorism and counter-narcotics. Secondly, we've had, as I said, a very bipartisan support from the United States long time ago, from Democrats and Republicans all together. And as we have had in the past a very good relationship with the other administrations, we are having a very good one now. You mentioned the free trade agreement. Yes, that's a very deep, important thing for Colombia and for the U.S. too, not only for economic reasons. We need this agreement to have more investment in Colombia, to have more business right. with many other countries, but also for okay. political re reasons, because every inch we open up for trade mm -hmm. and investment is an inch that we take away from drugs and terrorist activities, too. All right. Honorable Minister Jaime Bermudez, thank you very much for spending time with us, and best of luck uh, with your deployment of resources to aid Haiti. We'll